What up my freaks, Ruinous and Sight here with part 9 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Croc Gar campaign. So as we saw last time, in a perhaps somewhat ill-advised army, Croc Gar took on Scarbrand. We did manage to pull off the victory, but it was a very, very close thing. In fact, our entire source battle line did collapse, and it was the elites and the Chameleon Skinks and Pterodon Riders that managed to pull us out of the fire. And was a very, very fun battle, however, so at least that made it worth it. Plus, we got uh, we got Karakazgal out of it and some nice XP, money, and everything that comes with all of that. And in addition to that, we got some alignments, so we can immediately get the third Blessed Saurus Warrior up to Blessing of Huan Chi, like so. And on top of that, Chameleon. Let's do this. We're going to have you move to Crocky. And we're going to take away Crocky's Blessed Chameleon Skink. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Why did I want to do this? Crocky is at 99. Yes, okay. So we want to do this in order to, because we leveled up, and get the Titchy Witchy's Raiders, which is a Cold One Regiment of Renown, or Cold One Spear Riders a Regiment of Renown. And that we could have two cavalry to work on, two units of cav, rather, to work on our flanks. Which should be pretty nice. Alrighty, now, other than that, there isn't really all that much to do this turn. We do have some money to spend. And we're going to start by spending it by getting Mr. Shilaz, Shilaz, whatever, uh, into our skink army. As I recall, and I hope I'm recalling correctly, skink chiefs do buff... Skinks quite a bit. Ah, yes, guess this line. Yeah, so we got melee defense, missile strength, weapon strength, missile resistance, and leadership, as well as physical resistance for all skinks in the army. So if we have a primarily skink-centric army, like Chameleons is right now, it's good to have at least one, probably two, of these skink chiefs in it. In a regular army, though, they're not... Uh, they're not all that valuable, though I suppose if you're going to build something like an Ancient Stegodon anyway, you're probably better off putting a Skink Chief on an Ancient Steg rather than just a basic Ancient Steg. Kind of the issue with the, uh, with like Necromancers and Corpse Guards, similar sort of deal. Why bother building Corpse Guards once you have the capacity to build Necromancers when you can just build Necromancers instead of that ride said Corpse Guards? Anyway, Chameleon, you're good as you are. We're probably going to have you recruit some stuff, though. I'm not thinking or wondering whether it would be good to do it here. As opposed to, say, doing it here, where it only takes one turn rather than two, and just having an army march up and trade those units. It would be a lot faster, especially as our recruitment capacity here is extremely low as well. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it, and if it's the best way to do it, we can actually get rid of the spawn pools of the Braves here, as we don't need them. And wait, just to double check, we still have- oh, wait, but these ones are back here, aren't they? And they're quite a bit further. Hmm. I mean, I suppose what we could do is recruit here at the Cursed Jungle. A bunch of chameleon skinks and stuff, or red crest skinks rather. And then move to Teotihuacan and the Golden Tower, and then recruit the Basties, and then move all the way up like this. Now, you know what? That seems like a lot of effort. Maybe it would be better to just recruit here. Alright, what we'll do then is not have chameleon recruit, but rather have Kano's Kier here sit and recruit stuff. And in fact, he can start right now. We have the money for it after all. Start on a couple of red crests. We're going to need, what, four to six of these, right? Uh, we probably want to replace all the skin cohorts. And don't get me wrong, I really like the skin cohorts. The javelins do quite a lot of damage for such a cheap unit. But there's probably no place for them here. And they're just a little bit too weak. And they crumble too easily. And we'll want red crests and chameleon skin. So yeah, there's seven of these guys, so it's gonna take a while, mind you. But well, eight if we count the fact that we're missing. No, we're not missing a unit because we have the uh, skin priest or skin chief, rather. And we're gonna have another one. Anyway, <laughs> all that aside, let's do the buildings and let's go to the next turn, shall we? Building, building, building. 
We'll probably at some point delete this Grand Plaza. It doesn't actually serve all that much purpose here. It doesn't make any money. And our public order is actually maxed out. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's delete this right now. Yeah, it does give us five extra income. Hmm. 10% income for everything versus something like the Temple of Quetli, which gives us 100 extra income, as well as research and winds of magic power capacity for every single army, versus the Lodestone, which will give us only 50 money, similar amounts of research, slightly less, uh, but income from settlement buildings all regions faction-wide. Ah, these are both actually fairly decent to stack in high numbers. Hmm, I wonder which one's superior. If anybody has any opinions on that, let me know. Otherwise, I'm not going to make the decision now, and I'll just have to think about it. And generally speaking, I feel like it's probably the money thing, but after a point. I mean, another 30 to 50 uh, Winds of Magic Power Reserve everywhere would be good. What's the max Winds of Magic Power Reserve? Is it 150? I gotta look that up again, because we're gonna get a lots of extra from the Skink Priests to level up, so... Yeah, can't max that out too early. Anyway, ignoring all that, Karakazgal, you can keep your stuff for now. Cricket Fang Fort, we will be giving you to Thorak, but later on. Commandment available, we can pop the alignment of monuments, and then lastly... We got an ally mission that I forgot to do last time. Let's go for a scar grinder. It doesn't really matter. One of the coronate units. And then we did the regular diplomacy last time, so let's end the turn and let's proceed. Alrighty, now I doubt that Scarby's forces are going to come up here to Karakazgal, especially after he suffered a resounding defeat, which means Morgheim is probably open for the taking and probably the sacking. Uh, Ironbrow's expedition. You want a military alliance? It's going to be a no, but it's going to be an eventually. Bloody hands, let me guess, war? Yeah, it's going to be war. We were expecting this for a couple of episodes already. As soon as we saw the bloody hands, we knew that they were going to declare war on us. The unfortunate thing about that is that the uh, Badlands, the Wasteland terrain type, is completely useless to us. Or climate, rather. Which means... Ooh, hello. Recruitment costs for monster units? Oh, that's just swell. Well, 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 that's just swell because... In one turn, we will have completed the Beast Lair. Perfection. We'll, we can actually make use of that. Let's actually give this a read. Monstrous Kinship. A battle-scarred source old blood has come to your attention at the urging of the Mage Priests. More feral than his brethren, he has a natural empathy with the great beasts of Lustria, who rally to him as one of their own. With much fasting and meditation, others are learning to commune with... Damn it. My bad. <laughs> others are learning to commune with or in this fashion. As a result, recruitment costs for monstrous creatures have fallen faction-wide. Alrighty, we only get this for two turns, so we gotta make use of it. Uh, or three turns. Well, two turns after we complete the building. But otherwise, a good thing to have. Crocky, you're heading out to Morgheim. We gotta sack that so we can complete our artifact missions. And we may actually want to raise it. Because bloody hands are there anyway. Uh, well, this would be tough, but we can send a second army in. You can go on the, this. And I forgot to get to Chiwichi's Raiders, didn't I? All right, we can still do that. Tuchiwichi's raiders can go into Chameleon's army, and Chameleon can simply transfer them. Like so. Alrighty, and yes, to the transfer. Then, Xylaz, you're going to join Chameleon's army as well. And that's going to be a 20-unit army, at least for now. Kanos Kier, do we need you? No, wait, you're recruiting. Right. <laughs> I forgot that very quickly. Alrighty, well, that's about it. Let's do the rest of the buildings, because there ain't that much right now. And then we'll attack Morkhan. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is going to bother me until we change it. Uh, we should just delete it and replace it with something. It is actually providing us something with the plus 5. I do feel like one of the temples does need to be built, but I'll make the decision once again later on. Let's upgrade Krokkar's skill points, or assign Krokkar's skill points. We know that we're going through Swift Rider, which means we know that we're going through Rally. 
so that's pretty easy. And giving us that extra little leadership buff should we need it. And, for example, in that batter, battle with Scarby, our Soros line collapsed, so the rally would have certainly helped. And then it's Jungle Dominion that we want as fast as possible. But 10 armor for Soros alone is going to be valuable. And frankly, the weapon strength is pretty good for them as well, as they have very high weapon strength as it is. And we're buffing it further already via various means, including Pradat, who gets Ferocity of the Age. Nice. And more a reduction for Soros cost. You, lastly, Tedo Echo, let's get you... You know what, for this particular battle, hmm, we are going to break through the gate, most likely. Especially, well, we have to break through the gate, we have no choice because we don't have towers. And Comet of Cassandora would be very nice if we can land it. Alright, you know what, let's get one point in Comet of Cassandora, but maybe another point in Earthing? This would allow us to overcast it if we wanted to. Hmm, you know what, a level 1 is probably fine. Chain Lightning is also very good in certain situations. Other, well, the ones around the gate are probably the best times to use this thing. But we probably won't have enough mana to cast everything, so you know what, for now, I think we're just going to go for Earthing, just so you don't miscast too many times, because I love to spam Harmonic Convergence Overcast and Uranon's Thunderbolt as well. Just because of the greater armor piercing, which we do need against the coordinate forces. <laughs> Lastly, you, Chameleon. You're going through Ancient Cunning. Do we just start straight up building you as a... Uh, uh, as a Skink Lord? I really like the fact that his name is Chameleon and he leads chame Chameleon Skinks and Chameleon Stalkers, among other Skinks. It does feel right, even if he's not directly a Skink Lord. We can build Skink Lords later. Hmm... Anything that would be really useful that would be an easy decision right now. You know what, let's just get Skirmisher. It doesn't necessarily lock him into this anyway, because Skirmisher still buffs up Salamander, Hunting Packs, and Razor Dawn Hunting Packs. Which means if we wanted to suddenly switch him off Skinks and put him into Saurus combined with various Hunting Packs, it would still work, so Skirmisher it is. And, oh, did I not assign the point to the Skink Chief? Definitely replenish troops. All the rest of the stuff is not nearly as useful. And here we go. Uh, what are we facing off against here? Okay, at least we're only facing off against only three Chaos Warriors of Corn, which are actually quite the problem for us right now. Blood Letters, funnily enough, probably less so, because they don't have insane amounts of armor. But otherwise, there is still definitely a fight to be had here, so we'll have to be careful. But I'm loving the fact that we have all these Fire Leech Bolas. But the enemy has very little in the way of air defenses, and we're going to make good use of that. Here we go, our army may be at only about half HP, but we have an air force. What exactly are they going to do to our air units? Absolutely nothing, because they can do nothing. Really, they can only rely on their towers, which we can destroy with the air force fairly easily, if any of them are even in range. And we can see them in the background bombarding those enemy walls already. Obviously, the enemy is going to start the battle off by summoning blood letters on top of us immediately. And, uh, huh, interesting. Menace Below, as I recall, had a, uh, I want to say, 45 second cooldown from the start of the battle, whereas the blood letters are just summoned within the first second. Hmm, I wonder if SFO removes the cooldowns altogether or it's the blood letters that can be used at any time, pretty much instantly. Still, it doesn't really matter because the AI always wastes those by putting them right in the middle of your troops, only for them to be pretty much instantly destroyed. Anyway, we have a lot of ammo to go through, so we're gonna have the Pterodons just do as much damage as they can to all of these Chaos Warriors, and Blood Letters and whatever else they can reach until they run out of ammo. Kind of similar to what we would be doing with an artillery bombardment in the situation where we would be, well, where we had artillery, which we right now don't, but we might as well. 
Considering this bombardment should be pretty darn effective as well. It's like having some mortars on your team considering these guys do some uh, fairly wide shots. Alright, well, keep it up. They're not going to do a crazy amount of damage to the Chaos Warriors, mind you, because these guys have way too much armor. But it's fine. Plus, we gotta do something while we start breaking down that gate, and we are heading towards it, but it will take a while to get through it with no ram, so and the Fire Leech Bombardment continues. We'll see how much kills these guys have gotten, or how much damage they've gotten as well by the end of this. I'll be curious to see whether after this is done it will be more or less than the actual melee troops, because they will move in eventually. Oh, and looks like the enemy's gonna summon some more blood letters, but that's perfectly fine by me, as it gives us something to actually watch, other than the uh, continuous Bola bombardment. Alright, plus it gives something for the Saurus to do, as I imagine first in to the enemy settlement will not be the Saurus, but will rather be the, uh, uh, the Croxies and the other elites. Mostly because we don't want to endanger the Saurus. Alrighty, there we go, that second unit of Blood Letters is nearly done. Must be kind of infuriating to get summoned into reality and then instantly vanished, or pretty much instantly vanished. How's their ammunition looking? About half, a little bit less actually, on the Pterodons. They haven't actually gotten a crazy amount of kills, but the damage is certainly there at uh, 12, 13k to about 16k and everything in between. But they can continue for a while yet, at least until that gate is down. We're working on it. And we do have more Pterodons moving in as well, as our reinforcement forces also have Pterodon riders. Plenty more to bombard for all of you. And we are going to be saving our air airdrops, our bombs here. Would be, I think, wasteful to drop them right in the middle of a very loose formation like the ones that are running around and trying to escape the bolas. Much better to wait for the enemy to cluster around the gate as soon as we break through and then drop the bombs at that time. Alright, the gate is open. And it looks like a few of the enemies want to move in. Well, that's perfectly fine. Please, go ahead and cluster around the gate. I'm sure it'll work out swell for you. And there we go, and now that they're clustering around like that, these shots from the Fire Leech Bullets, not just the bombs, but the regular shots, are going to count for a lot more as the enemy will blow it up. There we go. You gotta love that bombardment. And that's a pretty nice cluster of enemies, so we're going to drop our first set of bombs right into the middle of them, and look at all those blood letters melt from that. We can always follow it up with even more bomb drops, however like so and more blood letters will disappear in fire and I mean their own fire not the fire leech build of fire but also the fire leech build of fire to be fair on top of that before we get anything like Saurus in here we're gonna drop a comet of Cassandora right on the enemy we got this for the siege and that's quite a bit of damage coming in as well and this must be pretty horrifying for the poor horse uh, horses 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 <laughs> Forces of corn. Forces, forces, forces. Alright, looks like the balance of power is very much in our favor now, at about 85 to 90 percent. The enemy are starting to run out of units, having taken all that magical damage and the bombardments. More bombs coming down and more bloodletters going back to the warp. And it looks like a little bit more and the battle will be ours already. Uh, the enemy towers will have achieved absolutely nothing here because this one is too far away and we don't need to deal with it. And the enemy did have a unit of skull cannons but it's also not really doing anything unfortunately. Not that, I, not that it probably would have achieved all that much by itself. It could have annoyed our aerial units, mind you, um, but I doubt it has the ammunition to have actually killed them, and then once it moved into melee, it would have gotten just destroyed, like everything else here. Alright, Pradot fighting in the middle of the fray here, though he is a little bit hurt at this point, at about a third of his HP, maybe even a little bit less, so we do have to be careful about him getting surrounded and killed 
by those flesh hounds and the remnants of those blood letters. The Legion of Chakwa has also moved through the gate. I can't camera closer to the gate, unfortunately. Though the Legion of Chak Chakwa is now in a fairly dangerous position as well. I probably could have just not had them move in at all and kept it to the elites who are much less likely to uh, to lose models right now. Well, the Kroxagors are much less likely to lose models. I don't even count the Steg because it's only one model. Though I suppose you should count the possible HP damage on the Steg and the Lord and the heroes and whatnot. Anyway, that looks like that's about it for the enemies around the gate, and in fact, that is about it for all the enemies in the battle. Only one thing remains, and it's that Skull Cannon, and it will probably disappear in a few. Alright, come on now. It's wavering. Oh, huh, huh, that's interesting. I thought it was in banishment before because the rest of the army shattered, but apparently not. Uh, that's fine though, I'm sure. Oh, we just gotta get near it and send Chameleon out to deal with it. He's at full HP, unlike Pradat, who had broken through the gate and had suffered a little bit of hurt fighting those flesh hands and blood letters. But it's okay, Chameleon is perfectly capable of taking on a single unit of skull cannons by himself. Ah. I wish the barrier didn't screw with the camera, but what can you do? Ah, maybe it wasn't the barrier, or the, maybe it was the uh, little, uh, little buildings around it. And there we go, the banishment complete. That was the last unit, and the battle, just like that, fairly easily, is ours. I don't imagine we took too much damage there, but let's check out the kill count. Alrighty, there we go. Easy enough. A little bit of damage with the, to the Legion of Chakwa, but really and not anything else. And we probably could have avoided that as well. Uh, do I feel bad about taking advantage of the fact that the enemy completely lacked anti-air? No, not really. I mean, uh, let's face it, we have to take the advantage of this because, uh, well, air units are part of the game. And, of course, in modern warfare, air superiority is quite important. And I'd like to think that the old ones taught their children a thing or two about that sort of thing. Anyway, we got ourselves eight alignments from that. Crocky, you are going to sack the place. And, oh, wow, you heal quite nicely for that. Very nicely indeed. And we got a Tormentor Sword, a very nice pickup as well, and there we go, the Cloak of Chotek, uh, which, frankly, the buffs are kind of garbage, but the, uh, uh, the melee and missile weapon damage plus one for all blessed units. The more of these artifacts we stack, the more we have, and the more powerful our blessed Saurus are going to be, among other units as well. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, you... hmm. Who's gonna have this? I guess we could put it on the Skink Priest for now. He's the only one that would get any use out of the spell resistance right now. And then you, Recovered Tablet of Knowledge, Recruit Rank plus one all units and army, unit experience gain, own armies faction-wide. That's not so bad. And it is a talisman, eh? Hmm. Well, we only have one unit recruiting right now, but we are about to have two. And A, the Pahwak Sentinels. That will be nice as well. A and Crocky unlocked Grimgore. Very, very nice. Alrighty, so you guys are completed now. And I forget, what exactly did we need to get the... Uh, uh, the Wounded Hide Armor, which is actually quite nice as well. Oh, damn, this bug again. Uh, we needed to win six battles. Oh, that we can do. Uh, Chameleon. Are you able to occupy Morgheim? No, which means Crocky has to do it. Hmm. I was going to raise it, but honestly... I mean, we could get you out of here, but then it would get its frickin' garrison back. Alright, we're gonna occupy it for now. We're not gonna try to hold it, though. We might abandon it, or we might just directly trade it to our dwarfin... Uh, our dwarfin friends. That's probably the way to do it. Alright, and what we will do is Golden Tower. You're about to get some recruits going, so recruit lord. Isoko Arismate, you're coming back. Exactly 5,000 gold per turn. And then you, my friend, are going to get the Recovered Tablet of Knowledge. 
to get that recruit rank plus one. And is there any ancillaries that help you recruit? No, it doesn't look like it. At least none that you can currently use. Also, get Root Marcher. You're gonna be marching along. And do we want any Feral Stegs? We could build a second one for Croc. I mean, there's a decent chance we'll get a Blessed Spawning one at some point, but who knows when that's gonna be. And granted, this place... Ooh. Alignment of War. Wait. Uh, you will give us... Oh, it's only recruitment capacity. It doesn't actually do that much. It doesn't increase recruit rank, unfortunately, so I guess we don't really need it right now. Alright, you know what? Start on the Feral Stick. Expensive or not, it would be nice to have two in that army. We're gonna get other types of dinos in that army as well, but for now. It's gonna be a while until we unlock them all. Also, you have Grimlock automatically, which means we can spend another point, and it's definitely gonna be Jungle Dominion. And there we go. Now, these guys are at 64 armor. They are going to also get further armor via Apex Species. Up to 74, and I forget, do you give them any more armor? 74 is okay, but it's still a little bit too low. Combat Reflexes gives you plus 3. Alright, so we can get another 3 armor up to 77 via getting a second source Scarvet, which we will also do as fast as we can. In fact, wait, will this increase their capacity or was the tier 2 capacity increased? Uh, wait, this is tier 2. Okay, so it will increase our capacity. Lovely. I'll have to keep an eye on these guys. Definitely want to get another perfect spawn. <laughs> if it's a possibility. Let's also spend these alignments while we're at it. And that will be the fourth of our blessing of Huan Chi. There we go. A very nice Blessed Source Warrior line with Bleed and Stalk and Devastating Flanker. I can't wait to see these guys in a proper field battle as well. Maybe one where they're not such a disadvantage as they were when we fought Scarbrand. Uh, Kemri we're ignoring for now because they're in the desert and we're taking the desert for ourselves. Uh, Ironbrow's Expedition, you want that military agreement? We will get that. Don't you worry. But it ain't time right now. Uh, Marcus Wolfhart, no, we're not going to be friends with you. I'd love to be friends with you in my Carl Franz campaign, but not in this one because Mazdamundi and Gorok both hate you, so, yeah. Uh, you can't go into March stance, can you? No, damn. Damn you, turn attrition. Oh, well. I guess that looks like another end turn, doesn't it? I'm going to keep checking this, and it's going to be continuously bothering me. Uh, damage building, damage building. Oh, it's this place. Uh, we don't actually care about this place. But you can keep the Skink Favelas there for now. We're not going to bother repairing it. We're just... I was about to say, we're just going to trade it to the Dwarves, but we can't trade it to them until we trade them the Crooked Fang Fort. Do we want to do that right now, maybe? We do want to pass through this territory. Oh, wow, the public order here is also quite problematic. Thorak, you better not lose these territories we're giving you. First we drink, All right. then What was this place talk. called? Crooked Fang Fork, yes. Uh, where are we? Here? 42. Uh, man. This seems like a ways, doesn't it? Maybe we'll wait a turn. He should get a little bit richer by then. Uh, if we want to declare war on anybody, like, Fair ooh, wow, Lisa, what the heck happened to you? Fair and dead. are you ready for a confed? Oh, it would be amazing to confed into Lustria early in the game. I would absolutely love that. Because then we could be fighting there at the same time as we're fighting here. Uh, join your war against Clan Spittle. Yeah, let's do that. Honestly, we should probably join all of these wars. We will probably have to eventually. You know what? Screw it. Just join the war against the Awakened as well. Yeah, and they're still willing to do that. And to pay us quite a bit of money. It's unfortunate to deprive Gorok of the money, but honestly, if he's down to one settlement, ideally Itza, and confederates with us, that would be just swell. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that, and the reason I wanted to do that right now was to ask Thorek to join those wars when we trade him his new territory. 
That would be pretty nice, because it'll just further increase our relationship. And actually, wait, Tic Tac, how are you doing out here, buddy? Uh, you don't like our treaties with the Bowman of Orion, but otherwise we don't really care. You're currently fighting the Rock Op Dynasty. Let's join that war. We can get Thorek on the Earth side as well, and get you guys friendly with each other. We're not going to attack the Bowman of Orion, though. If uh, Tic Tac kills them, great. If he doesn't, when we confederate him then that war will cease anyway. We'll see. Hopefully that doesn't completely tank everybody's relationship. Also, let us put the... Hmm. Two turns, eh? This is gonna need an upgrade, but you know what? For now, we're gonna go alignment of war. We need to recruit here faster, Kano's here. This Chameleon's army needs to be maxed out. All right, there we go. As prepped as we're gonna be, we got our new lord about to be recruiting. We got plenty of cash, though for how long remains to be seen due to the expensive stuff. And well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Scar Grinder. Scar Grinder. Perhaps he's named for grinding on Scarbrand. Lanashi Giggle. Garbrand's dead, so he can't stop me making stupid jokes about him. Hmm. Giblet? <laughs> or a giblet? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, orc names. I love them. And the Glyph of Hexoatl. Oh, wow, look at all these uh, conflicts that we're getting. None of the stuff that we're fighting other than the Warriors of Chaos. Wait, orcs aren't here either. Yeah, well, at least fighting chaos. Let's give this a quick read, though. And you fashion for inscribing the symbol of Hexoatl, the city of the sun, into armor pieces is spreading throughout the empire. All your armies now have increased leadership when facing the forces of chaos, Norska Beastmen, and the Vampire Counts. But not the Vampire Coast. Well, that's interesting. Why would... Okay. Okay. <laughs> It must be an old uh, buff thing. It's weird that it would be the Vampire Counts, but not the coast. Uh, are we able to reach you? No, even Krokgar can't reach you across the uh, across the water here, which is quite the shame. Wow, Krokgar can reach Scargrinder, though. Okay, looks like we're killing Scargrinder, then. Uh, so, Kanos Kier, you... I guess you can help with this. You leech a little bit of XP. Why not? Go here. Rocky, you're gonna attack in a second. Let's spread out by doing the admin a little bit. Uh, Jungles of the Gods, yes to money. Eastern Badlands, no, we're about to trade you. Uh, Morgheim, we are going to trade you away as well, mostly because it's a useless red territory. And I think that's all we can do, eh? I wonder if we could be friends with Karazakarak at the same time. We could give them Badlands territories as well. It doesn't have to be all Thorek. I don't want Thorek to get too powerful, because he's going to start stealing territories here, and we really don't want that. Granted, we could trade him Badlands territories for him, but, I don't know, it still seems like an annoyance. In general. But anyway, uh, Kroki, attack Scar Grinder. We do have a quest to kill him. I just want to double check that that's the only quest we do have, and yes, indeed it is. And we did build the outpost with you as well. Alrighty, Kroc, away. Oh, look a look a Grimlock. All right, Scar Grinder, you about to die, man? Uh, can we auto resolve this? Honestly, this doesn't seem worth fighting. I'm gonna auto resolve this, and I'm gonna hope that it doesn't absolutely cripple our army. Come on, don't screw us on this. I did check that it didn't kill the Red Crested Skink system. Oh wow, we got eight alignments for that. Uh, we are going to replenish. Ooh, it's a lot of money, but. We really need replenishment right now. Kill an eight. Iron Brows Expedition mission successful. Lovely. Victory over corn. Pradot, you've got your Carnosaur as well. Damn, we just got double Carnosaurs and oh wow. We were making 5k per turn, now we're making nearly 4k. Uh, how much do these guys cost now? Uh, wait. Pradot costs 515. Hmm. We are quite close to Death Gorge. We can maybe sack their capital too. We wouldn't be giving Death Gorge up either, so we could actually hold it. And the reason for that being that Agrul Migdal and Gorgazan, I believe, are desert territory. No, wait, Badlands. Never mind. Hmm, so they'll still be... If they are still Badlands, then they'll be red. Then maybe in that case we do still give them up to, uh, to the dwarves. While we attack Camry and the uh, followers of Nagash. 
But that'll be for later. Anyway, Kanoskir, you are going to move into the settlement here. And you're going to continue recruiting. So, Chameleon, let's move you into Morgheim to quote-unquote protect it. Not so much because we need to protect it, but so much because uh, we want to trade it to our friends. Rocky, are you able to reach us in one turn? It looks like you are. So let's continue punishing Scarbrand. And you can go into channeling stance so you don't cost quite as much. Oh, there we go. Now we're back up to 5k. That was the reason. Yeah, so you need how many red crests? You have two currently. Let's get at least two more chameleon stalkers. And these will be two red crests and then I guess three more. Alrighty, unless we want to build another thing here. Well, we probably do want an Ark of Sotek in here. We can transfer it over. Alright, uh, in the meantime, let's go two Chameleon Stalkers, two Red Crests. Lovely. And then you, my friend, please make use of that monstrous kinship. So, one Ark of Sotek, one Basti with Solar Engine, and one Basti with Revivification Crystal. Alright. It looks good. And did I put you into alignment of... I did not put you into alignment of war. But it'll only cost us one turn. It's not such a big deal. Hopefully we can move through this territory relatively unharmed. <laughs> it would be annoying to build these guys and then just to lose them immediately after. But we'll see. Uh, you are going to be ignored, ignored, ignored. And, ah, yes, not ignored. Gem Cutter's Workshop. Proxagor Labor District. And most definitely, the Old One Monument. I was a little bit tempted by the Geomantic Pylon. We do want to start building those, but when things are Tier 4, not Tier 3. I do wish that the growth here was a little bit better, but... Oh well, it's not such a big deal, and it's not like the growth is horrible right now, anyway. Uh, unassigned skill points we can skip, at least for now. Uh, damage building, same. The building upgrade, same. Well, let's give the Crooked Fang Fort up to these guys. Those who respect the old ways are welcome in my all. So 42, all the money, and join war against these guys. There we go, still willing to give us all the money. Uh, well, he's gonna love us after Earth all this. Bound. Hopefully he's strong enough to hold off the enemies that actually attack him. Mm. Mostly, I just don't want to deal with all of these extra yellow territories. This seems like a nice little line, a secondary border for us that anybody going south has to get through. Anyway, let's end the turn. If only we had gotten just a little bit more in the way of uh, alignments, we could have gotten the last alignment that we had spent. Maybe we'll shortly get another mission to get more Blessed Spawnings. And hey, Thorax Army, or, well, not directly Thorax Army, but belonging to Thorax Faction, I should say. Coming up north, I guess you weren't going to achieve anything at Def Gorge. We, on the other hand, may. Alrighty, Trait Gain, Disciplinarian for Kanos Kier, the Winds of Pain, which gives us additional Winds of Magic Power Reserve per turn, which is great for certain armies. Uh, Isoko Rismate is making Dinos. And it's finally time to get some dinos on the field. And Krogar, you are indeed in range of Death Gorge. Now, what are we looking at here? Ooh, they actually have some air defenses. Well, at least in the form of Chaos Furies and a lot more Chaos Warriors of Corn. And a couple of these uh, Chaos Spawn as well. Still, we should be able to manage that. Uh, you can just stay here for now. Although, the wall is up. You know what? Just repair this. It's not that much cost, and we're going to give it to our allies. Why give our allies garbage, right? We're not that mean. Only sometimes. Only when the when the great plan demands it. Uh, let's get to you, Curse of the Midnight Wind, then we'll get one point in Chain Lightning, one point in Magical Reserves, Arcane Conduit, and then start maxing that tree out. For Dot, max out Ferocity of Age. Very nice. How hard do you hit right now? 825. And 1k for Croc on uh, on Grimlock. And that is without his line yet. He's gonna get quite a bit stronger on top of that. And we still have to get the Hand of the Gods as well, which we don't have. Maybe after Death Gorge, if we take damage here, then it'll be a good time to do it. Karnath Slaughter Wing. I always find it funny when the... Uh, when uh, lords name themselves like this, because Karnath is the name of corn, 
This this is the equivalent of naming himself Corn as well. But I guess Corn A troops are probably well, you know, it kind of also makes sense. Hmm. You know, funnily enough, I don't remember any uh uh Slaneth, for example, for Slanesh. As in any of the lords being named directly that, interestingly enough. Yes for Quorn, not so much for Slanish. Anyway, the Baros, let's upgrade you. Let's double check diplomacy and then we attack again. Kemri. They know what's coming. And we're coming for that desert. It's nice and warm for us, cool bloods. And Ironbrow, you got another mission for us. Ooh, Queek is back up and running, yes. We're gonna accept the Queek mission. We we can use this to keep track of him roughly. So he's somewhere here, probably either sitting at Karakazul or possibly raiding this territory. And yeah, after we very, very heavily damage the exiles, we're gonna head down. Uh, will Krokgar be needing to attack the floating village? Oh my, yes he will. Chameleon can't take care of this right now, unfortunately. Not until he gets some dinos in there. The army will be too weak. But he'll work his way up to it, not to worry. Anyway, let's take Death Gorge and deprive Scarby of his capital, shall we? Uh, yes, we're gonna fight this cinematically as well. Alrighty, here we go, round two, and once again we have air superiority, but now we also have Carnosaur superiority, which is a very good kind of superiority to have at any and all times. Grimlock on the field together with, uh, I don't know what Pradot's, Pradot's uh, Carnosaur's name should be. I do appreciate any suggestions though. Ah, oh, Pradot's, uh, Pradot's Carnosaur doesn't have as much uh, head armor as uh, Grimlock does, though I guess it does make sense. Could use a little bit more, just for fun. Anyway, there we go. Those two are going to start working on the gate. They barely got hurt from the towers firing on them, and they're about to be joined by our Steg and our Blessed Croxies. We also got to remember that our units of the Blessed Saurus also are all now in stock, so the, uh, the ability to move towards the gate here is going to be pretty valuable without getting hurt by the towers. Speaking of towers and getting hurt, the first of the enemy towers goes down to our aerial units who did mob it and destroy it, and they are going to head down to the second one shortly. Right after taking care of this unit of, uh, uh, of Furies here, we do still need to deal with them as well. And those shots go completely wide, but not to worry, we're gonna move in with Teto Echo, and he's going to cast a spell just to buff himself up by Harmonic Convergence, while getting damaged by these Furies, and allowing the rest of our aerial units to shoot them and or attack them. Obviously the debuffs between Roiling Skies and the various other debuffs that Teto Echo has by virtue of what he carries are pretty significant. As that said, however, and there's a lightning, that said, however, Teno Echo did take more than half HP damage from the attack of those Furies. Much more than I was expecting. I uh, I feel like I, I should have cast the Overcast Harmonic Convergence instead of the regular one. Yeah, that was definitely my bad. I thought that the regular one would be enough considering how badly debuffed these guys are uh, due to all the uh, stacked anti-air debuffs that we have there. But oh well, live and learn. And he did live so I will somewhat possibly learn. And do the overcast next time. Alrighty, well, it looks like these Furies are about to go down. All of our Fire Leech Will is actually entering the fray in melee and dropping the remnants of those Furies, though, to be fair, they were already pretty badly beat up. Next up, we got the other tower to move towards and destroy, which should happen in a few seconds, and the gate is already below half HP as well. In fact, Pradot has made it inside the city, and now the two Carnosaurs are just working on the gate from each side. 
And there we go, the enemy tower is down, the gate is about to fall, and our flyers have taken out anything that can threaten them, both the enemy flyers as well as, as I mentioned, the towers, which means they once again, just like last battle, have free reign to bombard the enemies. And that said, we got Carnosaur action in here, so while the, uh, uh, the aerial forces are probably still going to be stars, they're not going to get the spotlight. Carnosaurs are going to be what we're watching this time. Alright, and it looks like you got one blood letter there. And the other one, Crocky, is back here fighting some more blood letters. Alright, here come the blessed Croxivores as well. And here come the enemy in fairly large numbers to try to counter the fact that we've moved into the settlement. Fine by us though, because we can simply drop bombs on this blob of enemies, as well as continue fire each building. And there we go, bomb drop comes down, and lots of enemy blood letters disappear with them. Or with it, I guess. Well, no, it's with them, it's more than one bomb. There we go, speaking of more than one bomb, another, more, another set comes down, and here we go, the Croxagores and the Carnosaurs wade into the fray. Not too worried about dying super quick, but you have to be careful nonetheless with Crocky, as he does not currently have regeneration. He does, however, have that uh, blessed spawning of sacred spawning of Shoto, and that extra 25% physical resistance is going to be quite nice. Not against the blood letters, perhaps, but at least against the uh, piles of chaos warriors. Also, with that up, we've got 1.3k weapon strength. Not too bad at all. Not much to say about the rest of this, it's Carnosaur action in here. And I just don't see the enemy bringing the Carnos down. How's that balance of power looking incidentally? About 70% in our favor so far, still a little bit remaining here. Now let's see what it looks like after we take out this Blood Shrine and the Chaos Bond that the Carnosaurs are working on. Blood Shrine already down. And we got you next there, Chaos Spawn, and how you're getting hit by the Steg as well. And, oh, I was about to say maybe it's gone down, but it is still up, though another couple of hits should take it out for good. And its tentacles be wiggling, but not in an actual alive manner. It is now finished. There we go, another unit of blood letters. I don't know if this was summoned or moved onto the field from somewhere, but it's probably not super relevant. We've also moved our Blessed Source Warriors up and they will be entering the city now as well. Up here we are starting to run out of ammunition on our Teradron Riders, but I decided to move them where the, uh, uh, the Fire Leech Willows can't do splash damage to our own units. So they will end the bombardment here until they run out of ammunition. And then they'll fly, fly away. Not that they're even really needed at this stage in the game, or, well, not so much at this stage in the game, but in this stage in the siege, because they're probably likely to hurt our own units more than an enemy. All right, Croxies and Dinos, finish this. Hello, Carnosaurs. You having fun there? Alright, man, imagine if Lizardmen Death Stars had the lore of life available to them. I think one of the uh, Slam can heal, although it's been a while, I'm not 100% on it. I gotta double check. And I don't need Mazda Mundi. Yeah, we do have revivification crystals, and we should be getting our first one fairly soon as well, so we'll be healing our units up with that. Anyway, the last of the ammo coming down into the blobs of enemies. We're just going to speed it up while we move up to this little uh, barricade here. And as soon as it's down, we're going to move in and kill the rest of these Chaos Warriors. And I think there's three or four units that are still on the field that have, have not broken or shattered. And there we go, keep moving. And there's a Chaos Spawn up here as well. One of our units still has a tiny bit of ammo, so even more damage to those poor Chaos Warriors, and they're really blobbed up up here as well. Yeah. 
and it's looking like this particular battle is going to be no problem whatsoever. Granted, we got a very significant power-up once we uh, once we got the Carnosaurs. But these Cornate areas are still generally fairly frightening. So it's nice that they didn't pose too much of a threat. Hopefully we can see Scarbrand one more time before the battle, uh, or before this faction is destroyed. But if we can't, we can't. Alright, Predat now fighting by himself. I didn't bother sending in Crocky, because Crocky is pretty hurt and he doesn't have regeneration, unlike Predat. And Predat can just continue fighting the spawn of corn until it's done for. As he has plenty of his own HP remaining due to that region. And the fact that I guess he wasn't uh, in the uh, deepest part of the enemy formation. Alright, looks like one more hit by the Carnosaur will finish off that Chaos Spawn, and uh, yep, it's a down, and I do believe that that the battle is once again ours. Once again, we did manage to preserve most of our units in terms of the Siege, the auto-resolve as usual quite wrong, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, let's see the damage, and uh, well, let's see if we took any damage as well, though I'm not sure that, well, if we did, it probably wasn't much. I think the Legion of... Shock one? No. Maybe one of the Saurus units, perhaps? <laughs> Let's see. Alright, there we go. Once again, the Fire Leech Bolas prove the value of their superiority, although in terms of sheer number of kills, Krogagar actually did manage to uh, defeat them, which is not surprising now that he hits for over 1k. We really, really need to find him a healing potion, though. Uh, he uh, does get quite badly hurt fairly often. Now, we can sack this, but we no longer have a quest for it, so I think we just straight up occupy, especially if we are intending to keep the territory. And we may, I don't know. We'll see. We do need a base for the attack on the, uh, uh, on the southern territories, but on the other hand, this is still a problem, so it's not like we're going to be wanting to inhabit the place. And, oh, we got another, uh, another one of these buildings. Interesting. Although, once again, in the yellow territory, so not super useful. Also, before I forget, did I put the... I did not put the Cloak of Chotek on anybody. Which means you, Shadow Echo, are going to get the Cloak of Chotek. There you go, buddy. And now we have plus 3% bonus for the uh, Blessed Spawning. 90 weapon strength on these guys. Looking pretty good for an 80 unit... Uh, uh, for an 80 model unit, or rather. I mean... They hit harder than the uh, Cold One Riders do. They almost, they're gonna, by the time, by the end, they're gonna hit as hard as Croxagors looks like. At the very least, basic Croxagors, maybe not the Blessed Ones, but damn. Saurus are getting scary already. I can't wait to see what they look like closer to the end game. Unfortunately, though, with that, we are once more out of time, and I'm going to have to call the episode. Scarbrand is already in an extremely dire situation, and I do believe it's fairly likely that he'll be wiped out in the next episode. It's probably a good thing, too, because once again, we really don't want to be dealing with him for too long, as uh, the armor is just too much of an annoyance. And we should be dealing with the Tomb Kings and the rats, and to some degree the orcs instead. So next time we probably wipe out Scarbrand, but if we can, we will try to turn Crocky north to try to find and kill Queek. If we can find and kill Queek and at the same time give Karakazul to Thorek so he can have a homecoming, that would be pretty darn nice as well. And we'll probably also declare war on Camry either next episode or the episode after that, depending. As soon as we get a proper army down there, depending on how long all the other stuff takes. Anyway, more lizards to come. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.